But we're happy that we have several Canadians that have come down with the uh, white pelicans from Canada. None of them like staying in Canada during the winter time. I'm going to be reading this morning from uh, the book of Genesis, chapter 5, beginning with verse 21. We're continuing our study on the characters of the Bible. It says here, And Enoch lived 65 years and became the father of Methuselah. Then Enoch walked with God 300 years after he became the father of Methuselah. And he had other sons and daughters, so all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. I have some news for you. I'm an orphan. Well, for the last few years. In fact, most of you here are probably orphans. You are blessed if you still have one or both parents that are still alive. But, you know, all of my ancestors and all of many of yours, all those ancestors have died. They have gone, according to 2 Kings 2, to the way of all flesh. All human beings will probably one day die. And there have only been a couple of exceptions that we know about. One of those was the prophet Elijah. And Elijah, towards the end, was taken up by a whirlwind to a fiery chariot in the sky. He might have been the first astronaut. <laughs> then the other one is Enoch. It says that for 300 years, Enoch walked with God, and God took him, and he did not die. Now, in looking at Enoch's life, we might know that life itself is often described as a walk. And so I want for us to look at the stages of his life. First of all, there is walking in the darkness, a walking in the world. And the first 65 years of Enoch's life were unremarkable. Nothing is said about that. In fact, in Genesis chapter 5, again and again, that's all that it says about the people, that the life of such and such was so many years. They had children and then they died. But Enoch's life is remarkable not for the first 65 years, because those 65 years were probably pretty much like everybody else. They were years of walking and living in the darkness. And the darkness is actually the absence of light. People are sometimes afraid of the darkness. I, I was reading about H.G. Wells, who was the, uh, the science fiction writer. During the Second World War, uh, there were bombs falling in London. And he was outside and he was trembling and somebody came up to him and he said to them, I am not afraid of the bombs. I'm afraid of the darkness. I have always been afraid of the darkness. And even in a dark world, living in darkness, people still try, try to find something that is significant about their lives. And for some people, that's the power, but significance is not the same thing as power. All of us have read about the World War II, or the few like uh, some of our people that might have been there, but nevertheless, uh, we, uh, World War II was a tragic time, and the man with the greatest power was Adolf Hitler. And in Europe, it was his goal to conquer all of Europe. And he made a lot of progress in that. During that time, it said that some six million Jews were killed at his hand. But towards the end, he began to lose the power, and he was uh, entrapped in a house surrounded by the Allies. And at the age of 58, he took his own life. And so if the epitaph was going to be written about Hitler, it might be, and he lived 58 years, and he died. And ultimately, that's all that there was to it. Some people try to find significance in the things and amusements of the world. I was reading uh, this last week about uh, Jeff Be Bezos, who was the guy that started Amazon, he is the second richest man evidently in all the world. Worth billions and billions of dollars. And he is, apparently, he's, he's building 
a great yacht, $500 million, that's only a drop in the bucket for him, and it is supposed to be the largest private yacht in the world. It's so big, he has to have another huge yacht to follow along as the supply yacht. Not only that, but a few months ago, in one of his own rockets, he flew into space, became an astronaut. Now, I can't presume to know anything about the spiritual life of Jeff Bezos or anybody else. But I can say that if he does not know God when he dies, his epitaph might well be, he lived so many years, and then he died. Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? All the world is of no significance if we lose our own souls. In 1 John 2, 15, it says, Love not the world or the things of this world. Now we have to live in the world as long as we're here on earth. We live in the world, but the Bible says we are not to be part of that world. We are to be separated from it, and our lives are not focused upon the things that are so important. The things that the world thinks are significant are of no value with our God. So Enoch, for the first 65 years, lived in a world of darkness. But at the age of 65, something happened. He had a son. And often, something, some event in life turns our lives around. It did for him. And for the next 300 years, the Bible says that he walked with God. I was reading about Joseph the Savior. And he was a pilot during the Second World War. And he was also an atheist. He was shot down and he was captured by the Japanese. And he was put into prison under horrible conditions. And during that time, he had a chance to really reflect. And he remembered some of his friends and others that were Christians and thinking, maybe they had something more than I do. And so he asked his captors to give him a Bible, but they laughed at him. And he kept on asking for a year and a half, and they kept threatening him if he kept asking that there was going to be punishment but he continued to ask anyway. Finally, after that time, one of the jailers threw a Bible into a cell and said to him, you've got three weeks, and in three weeks I'm going to come and pick it up again. And he did. But during that time, a change took place in his life. When he was finally re released, he went back to Japan as a missionary. Enoch had such a change in his life. He turned his life around. So he was not now living as a part of the world, but now he was walking with the Lord. And that is the second part. Walking with the Lord. What does it mean to walk with the Lord? It's more than just a walk. It's a lifestyle. It's living with Him each and every day, growing and becoming more like Him, a process of time. Now, in Hebrews 11, 6, it refers to Enoch, and it says, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must realize that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those that seek him. God loves people of faith. And Enoch became a man of faith. He was consumed in his walks with God. We have a big dog. <clears throat> My wife got us to adopt him. He was just wandering around on the lake before. He had a big cut on the side of his head. He was skinny for not being fed. He had no master and no place to live but outdoors. She convinced me to adopt this dog. She kept asking, can we adopt him, Wayne? And I said, no, absolutely not. We're not going to adopt a dog, no. Well, we have a dog. <laughs> and every day it is my job to walk him. And so I go outside, put on my worn out walking shoes, and he stands up. He's, he's really old. And uh, 
the back end is, is, is arthritic. And so he kind of stumbles standing up. But then he becomes a young dog and he bounds toward the door because he's ready to walk with me. And you can tell that I'm his walking person. And he's accustomed to it. And he knows to get up at that time of day so that he can go walking. Bruno and I, we have a walking relationship. And that's exactly the kind of relationship that Enoch had with God. I'm told that there are people around the world that walk with their gods. In some countries, they actually have a huge statue and they, that, that statue is, walk, is, is walked down the street and they're behind it and they're worshiping their god made of wood or stone. They even have little images of their idols on the mantles in their houses. It was very different from Enoch. He walked with the Lord God. The Bible says that there were other people that walked with God. Adam walked with God in the cool of the day. Noah walked with God. But Enoch evidently had a unique relationship with God. He walked with the Lord for 300 years. What an awesome time that must have been. Now we know that uh, the man that walked the closest with God was the God-man Jesus. And Jesus' plans were the same as God's plans. His perspective was the same as God's perspective. His aspirations were the same as God's aspirations. Uh, his work was the work of God. He said that He came into the world to do the work of God and his whole life was bound around that and you and I every day are to be walking with him because he is our model he is our inspiration I've never been to Israel I think Carolyn has some of the rest of you have and I've told us it's a great experience to walk where Jesus walked on the earth maybe along the Sea of Galilee or uh, the uh, place in Gethsemane where he prayed and perhaps even the way of the cross and even a place that some say might be the tomb where he was laid all of those things must be great to walk with Jesus but there's an even greater experience that that doesn't even compare to and that is walking with him day by day and becoming more like him following in his ways in Micah 6 8 he says what does the Lord require but to do justice to love mercy and to humbly follow the Lord. Love the little song. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted Jesus is my plea. Enoch walked with God for 300 years. And then finally there's walking in the light. In 1 John chapter 1 verse 5 it says God is light. There is no darkness in him at all. Even in the, the midst of a dark world, we have a God that is light. And we follow him. You know, darkness and light cannot exist at the same place at the same time. Uh, as soon as you strike a match, the, the darkness dissipates. I remember years ago, I was walking into this deep cave. We went way down. And there were little lights that people had placed along the way so you could see. And we got to the bottom. And the, the guy switched off her flashlight and it was absolutely pitch dark. I, I put my hand in front of my face just to see if I could see it. I could see nothing at all. I could feel the wind with my hand, but I could not see my hand. And then she switched that little light back on. The darkness fled. That's the way that it is with the light of God. As we look in the Bible, we see that Jesus made the claim that He is the light. He said, I am the light of the world. And just a part of that light is seen during the transfiguration. Jesus was there and Elijah, who was the representative of the prophets, and Moses that represented the law, were there as well. And there were Peter, James, and John, the disciples, witnessing it. And suddenly, Jesus began to glow. It said it was brighter than the sun. And it was such an amazing sight. Peter, who had nothing to say, say said it anyway. And he said, Lord, let's, let's build some tabernacles here. 
Jesus was the light. And you know, just the contact that we have in us transforms us. You remember Moses when he came down from Mount Sinai? And when he did, he had been in contact with God and the glory of the Lord was shining on his face and the people were afraid and he had to cover that with a veil. Look what, what he says in 2 Corinthians 3.18. He says, all of us are looking with unveiled faces. We are transformed from one degree of glory to the next degree of glory. This comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Day by day, for those that, of us that are striving to walk with the Lord, God's glory is reflected and you know I look at some of you and some I see the glory of the Lord one of the greatest compliments that I ever had was I was in a Hardee's restaurant standing in line I think to get the sausage biscuit and gravy and while I was there a guy came up to me and he said you're a Christian aren't you and he said yeah I am and he said I said, well, how did you know that? And he said, I could see it reflected in your face. Now, if God's glory is growing day by day, it ought to be reflected in us even more now than it was then. So what's the message for us? We live in the world, but we are not a part of the world. We are a part of something else. Day by day, we are to walk with Jesus. God's glory, His light, should be reflected in us. Would you bow with me as we pray? Gracious God, You are our Almighty Savior. You are the light within our lives. And we know that one day we're going to walk to the light. And we may not be transferred like Enoch was. But we know that when we die, we will be in your presence. And your light will guide us. Thank you, God, for who you are, for what you have done through your son Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen.